A major one of these programs, the most expensive, is Social Security. Now, Social Security is a case, as you may know, and it's one of the most extreme cases of misleading advertising that I know of. It's not social, and it's not security. <laughs> what it is, is a combination of a bad tax and a bad relief program, a bad distributive program. It is sold as if individuals who pay Social Security taxes are paying for their own benefits that they're going to get later on. That's the language in which the Social Security Administration sells it. That's extremely misleading. What's happening is that people today are paying taxes on their wages. People today are receiving payments from the government. The relation between the taxes Mr. X pays and the benefits to which he is entitled is very, very slight. There is a tiny bit of a relationship to maintain this fiction. But on the whole, there's very little relationship. Two people who pay the same amount of money in through their lives may get very different benefits. But let's leave that aside. I want to go to the point I'm talking about about the tendency for us, and for those of us in the middle class, to impose programs that benefit us at the expense of people below us. Social Security does involve a very large transfer from the young to the old. That is, today's young pay taxes, which go to pay benefits to the old. But over and above that, it involves a very substantial transfer from low-income groups to middle-income groups. How come? Well, consider. At what age does a young man or young woman from the lower income groups go to work? 16, 17, 18. He or she will start to pay Social Security taxes at that time. At what time do we go to work or do our children go to work? You and they stay protected in schools, stay uh, uh, at college. They generally start to work at 24 or 25 maybe. And then they start to pay taxes. If you do a little actuarial calculation, as nowadays you can all do on one of those handy Hewlett Packard calculators, you will discover that the effect of this is to make the total payments of those who start early about a third higher in actuarial value than the payments of those who start later. But that's only half the story. Have you ever looked at the statistics of average length of life? Who do you suppose has a longer expected length of life, those in the lower income groups or those in the higher income groups? Those in the higher income groups. As a consequence, those of us in the middle and upper income groups pay f less taxes because we start paying later, and we get more benefits because we live longer, with the end result that you have a program enacted in the name of helping the poor and keeping the poor off the, out of the poorhouse, which has the effect of benefiting middle-income groups at the expense of relatively low-income groups. Now, over and above that, there are lots of inequities. There are lots of people in the middle-income groups who don't benefit, some in the low who do. I'm not saying there isn't. It's an enormously uh, complicated program, and there are many different considerations. But taken as a whole, it's a marvelous illustration of the tendency to, uh, uh, for legislation enacted in the name of helping the poor to turn out to be a way in which middle-income people help themselves. The only program I know of for which a good case can be made that the people who get the money have lower average incomes than the people who pay the taxes, the only program I know of is direct welfare, AFDC and direct welfare. And it's not an accident that that's the program which draws the greatest opposition and to which there is the greatest discontent on the part of the population as a whole. Now, it is a lousy program. I agree. So are all the others. <laughs> it's no worse than the others. It is. There is a welfare mess. And I have, as you may know, long been in favor of major reforms of the welfare program, of substituting a negative income tax for the whole collection of programs. But my point is that that's the only one I know of. And it's only a small fraction of the total expenditures on program labeled as being for poverty. 